Another person who also kind of raised um, problems or kind of, you know, no, not raised problems, but basically explained why they decided to leave is Duno. Duno had a very astute and I thought reasonable reason as to why he decided to leave No Jumper off the back of what happened with Adam, AD and Lush and House and whatnot. But this is Duno's reasoning for it, which makes a lot of sense if you were plugged in around the time this was going on. Thing happened with American Tolo and um, I was going through some things and I asked him to take a video down and he's like no and I was like okay and I'm like hey fool do me the bottle bada bing bada boom and he was like no and I don't gotta explain too much about what was going on but you know what I mean it was just like hey fool like I'm, I'm, I'm asking you for a favor and why are you not doing me that favor he's like it's content no and I was like okay so at that point and moment I understood it was a business and all my other feelings went were slowly went slowly out the door when it came to me holding it down, me being there. Uh, and no, 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 and and and, and I'm not talking like in, I'm, when I say all those feelings, I mean emotionally wise, business wise, I was still locked in, but emotionally wise, I'm. Just and he's got every reason to say that because if you were plugged in around that time, you would have known that Duna was going through hell, hell. The Mexican community in LA were cooking him. And if you remember, I think specific, the reason why I was like Tiger, I think it might be half, isn't Tiger half Mexican or is he, or is he half Asian? I forgot which one he is, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Tiger made a video for a song that he has called I Caramba. And in a video, it was basically him doing loads of like what you could, do, could be described as Latino or Mexican sort of stereotypes, right? Kind of poking fun at it. Me personally, I didn't have an issue with it. But again, I'm not from that community. So maybe there is some annoying stuff about it. But those are little kind of archetypes and stereotypes that you were kind of running through in the video. And a lot of the Mexican community got really annoyed. Oh, he's half Asian. Okay, cool. My bad. I thought he's half Mexican. Got re No, half Mexican guy is, um, is oh, the, the R&B singer, right? What's his fucking name? Uh, is he? Am I, am I, am I making it up? What's the R&B singer in his name? He's the one that's half Mexican. Or am I making it up? What's his fucking name, man? Curly hair. He only had really one good album. Fuck. Kid Cudi's half Mexican, really? Fuck off. <laughs> no, Bruno. It doesn't matter. Bruno Mars. You want to say Bruno Mars? Somebody's gonna say Brendan Schaub in a minute. Brendan Schaub's half Mexican. <laughs> Right, I'm going to say that show for the coin of the glory. Oh, I fucking love it. Uh, what's it going to say? What's it going to say? What's it going to say? Um, oh, sorry to tell. Big up. I think they are great at identifying talent, but horrible at managing it. Yeah, exactly. 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 Sorry to tell. But I don't know. I'm thinking about it a bit more. Maybe I'm confusing the whole point of a of an influencer or content creator led network or even channel. Right. Because maybe the reason why they do it it's just to get people on and to kind of increase their clout because something that pe I don't I don't realize now just thinking about it if you're a famous YouTuber or content creator and you make a network if two people blow up because of working with you that makes you look better like that makes you look good even though you may be secretly hate it you may be sabotaging behind the scenes if they actually become multi-millionaires in their own regard and rich and famous and shit that makes you look good so that increases your ability to attract more eyes onto you, more ads, more sponsors, more opportunities. So maybe even if the network doesn't last and it kind of just has a quick one year run, that one year run is better because it kind of shows people that you can do that kind of part of the job. But for me personally, I just feel like, I don't know, if I reached a point where I had a network, I kind of would have one eye of like stepping away from the camera. If that means that, I also want to step away from the scene. So I want someone just to manage it. I wouldn't want to be around that stuff all the time, but... Again, who knows? But anyway, going back to this Duno stuff. So Tiger films this video um, called I Caramba. Loads of Mexican and Latino or Latina stereotypes in it. The Mexican community goes crazy. Duno, for whatever reason, decides to defend the video, play centrist or something along those kind of lines. But, but basically, he didn't look good. In their eyes, he kind of looked like a coconut. Like he was basically, you know, excusing um, Tiger for coming in and disrespecting their culture. And I guess from listening to No Jumper, and absorbing some LA content, Mexicans don't play when it comes to their culture. Don't play when it comes to their traditions and don't play when it comes to where they're from and what they're about. They don't play. So clearly they went crazy. They handed him out. This one guy called American Cholo who's got quite big, um, you know, in that sort of space 
was calling him out. He's an older dude. And basically with, with Duna being younger and not being the, you know, the most well-spoken guy, he was obviously getting a bit um, annoyed by it and kind of putting his foot in his mouth. And then in the end, um, what happened? Oh, in the end, I think a video went up of American Cholo saying some suspect things, like dropping some racial slurs. But I guess it was taken out of context. But but they made it basically look like oh you're 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 raging against Tiger but you're actually racist in your own way and then there came this whole conversation around Mexicans actually being racist I don't know loads of racial gang um you know whatever stuff going on at the time it was hot for Duno so the video's up on No Jumpers account and Duno because he's fucking sinking out here he's getting all this pressure. He goes to Adam and says, hey, can you take the video down and help me out? Just as like a mark of respect so that I can let them know, hey, I, I got it taken down. I meant no disrespect. And Adam says, nah, this is content, bro. It's a content game. I don't care if you die out here. We've got to get these content up. We've got to get his numbers up. And for me, as a fan, I have to be honest, that and the Kelpie situation, when you no know, Jumper released the video of Kelpie getting fucking beaten up by suspects on live on air, that's when I knew... This place is changing. And again, I've been a fan of Blow Jumper since the Robesman era, right? If you know about Rob Robesman, Rope Gang in the old store with the one flipping iPhone, where they, where they the first time they interviewed Exotetansion, I was a fan of No Jumper uh, from time ago. So I, you know, I've always known Adam's be Adam to be a piece of shit, but I kind of, you know, put it to one side because I love the interviews. But when I saw them release the Kelpie video, and when I saw them you know, not basically help out Duna in this situation. I knew this place has changed, man. It's become one of those kind of like, you know, Daily Mail, BuzzFeedy, any click will do. It doesn't matter if we chat shit. doesn't matter if we promote the nonsense. And essentially with him, you know, Adam22 basically saying, oh, I look up to Vlad and Vlad being the king of like content is content. It, I knew it was going to go bad for him. But I also have sympathy for Duna because in that situation, even AD was saying at the time that Duna was scared for his life. Like, it was really up for Duna. Like, it was getting sticky. The, you know, the community were coming after him. They were questioning his Mexican, you know, heritage. They were questioning really who he's basically, re you know, respecting and backing up. And it got really sticky for him. And Adam said, nah. So that was definitely, for me, I thought, an inflection point. So you can only imagine what that must have felt like if you're Duna and you're actually in the situation. So he's obviously saying there that, you know, he was still being professional, but emotionally he was checked out because he knew those guys didn't have his back, especially in a moment of need. So it kind of is what it is, isn't it? What can you do in that regard? Um, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, Mexico, yeah Mexicans don't play exactly. Anyway, uh, yeah, um, no, I don't, I don't have an issue with suspect beating up Kelpie in that, in that, in that, in that encounter. It's heated. Um, oh, uh, Kelpie said something the suspect didn't like. Suspect said, "Say that again." Like, and and if you don't want to fight someone, you're scared. You want to, you know, conflict resolution. You want to make sure you kind of temper them. Like, yeah, yeah. I didn't mean. I didn't mean. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But Kelpie matches energy, and he kind of got what he was what was coming to him. It kind of is what it is. Just unfortunately, it got recorded. But if you're a media organization. If you want to get people to come in and interview, if you want to make sure you can promote it being a safe space, having one of your host beating the brakes off of another guest is insane to release it. Insane. Now, it could be one of those things that it becomes like a bit of an urban legend. It's a bit of a rumor that everyone kind of knows about. Maybe people pass the video around behind the scenes. But to put it out on YouTube, like on Twitter and shit, just for the views is insane. And I would guess, honestly, I would bet any any amount of money, I would bet any amount of money, them releasing that video had a lot of negative implications on their inability to get big guests. For sure. For sure, for sure. Like that video being put out was in one way good for their network because it brought eyes it got suspect a deal right at no jumper because he was a bit of a periphery figure then as soon as he got that adam decided to put his arm around him and stuff he was a new ad and it's, now he's got a fucking six-figure contract according to him so big up almighty suspect i love I, I like that guy even though a lot of guys people don't like him but let's be real that did a lot of damage reputationally for the business man you can't be having the guest being fucking pummeled in his chair like what what is going on here where is this isn't this meant to be a work a place of work like, guests are coming here and having some conflicts and back and forth with somebody, especially hip-hop. People argue all the time. So now people are thinking, what, if I bring my client here, you're going to beat him up because he disagrees with you that he, that you think he's album shit. Like, what the fuck's going on? Like, yeah, so I think that caused a lot of issues, personally, for me. But, hey, what can you do?